have a lot of grant money that we include in there that right. maybe other districts do not exactly. in that area. Right. So those are different aspects that you need to look at or if, if you really want to break down <coughs> why, then we need to pull the information from those buildings and break, or those districts and break them down further. Right. So it's not just, yeah, this is a great number, but even in business services, okay, it's 208%. Well, what do we include in business services that other districts don't? Right. Right. So besides the, the business office, we have our PRC, which has all the paper supply, you know, the warehouse and those things too. Then we also have some fiscal services in there. So do other districts, how do they record those as well? And it's possible that they record them in a whole different area than what we do. But we don't know that just by looking at this data. Right, right. Exactly, and that's the type of thing Right. We're talking about our best practice analyses, mm -hmm. right? and so that, that's 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 the approach. And at the end of the day, I mean, I'm just flying from manufacturing and other segments lean. You know, it's the it's lean management, you know, and applying it. And that right. doesn't mean cutting; it means understanding what's the underlying work that's going on. And, and, and that's one of the reasons why I broke down farther into this one spreadsheet because even with with the new board members, they may or may not know what a function is and what's broken out into that and what's included in pupil services or what's computed in other support services. That's why I broke that out farther. Now again, we can do, <coughs> excuse me, we can do the same thing for 1516 16 data and 1617, but I didn't want to go that route until we wanted to until I knew what the board wanted to analyze and see. But if we're looking, we need to be comparing apples to apples and oranges to oranges as much as possible. Correct. So if there are factors that we don't know, then before we get the numbers, we need to know those numbers. Mm -hmm. Because if we're comparing apples to onions, it doesn't really matter. <coughs> and all of this is good and what we need to look at. But bottom line, I need somebody to tell me we're spending more money in certain areas so student achievement will improve. That's what I want to know. How is our student achievement going to improve? improve? <coughs> So for me, it's you know, strategic direction and the analyses that kind of backs it up. I mean, I, I a lot of this is really good. I mean, I'm just thinking from a business standpoint, create a dashboard so we're looking at this and you know, update it as much as we can. Having that information readily available allows you to answer some of those questions. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm not sure how we pull that together, quite frankly. I mean, but it's clearly, I think we're all talking about strategic direction. And then What's the numbers that support that? Um, I think I think one of the next steps is as we boil this down and pull it together, you know, the, the one third, one third, one third example I gave was very simplistic. We very well may have five sixths of work of need in one area in year one. And the beauty with the way the bond money flows is if we need to front load an investment larger than that initial simplistic third in a certain area, it's certainly doable uh, because it's allowable, you know, so we, the board, uh, have the opportunity to make those discretionary choices as to what are the real instructional technology and, and curricular needs that we need to do. Um, yeah, that is ultimately the mission of why we're here. So student achievement and opportunities for students down the road is our, is our charge and our mission. We can't do it in a building that has a leaking roof and can't be heated. Um, or has drafty windows, or in a bus that breaks down and trying to get kids there. So those needs are not insignificant, but those are secondary needs to the instructional mission. So the instructional mission may very well have to capture uh, a little bit more of their piece of the pie, so to speak, um, all the while making very careful decisions about maintenance and, and upkeep and, and improvements. Um, you know, so we, we invest there as well. And I believe that the parents stay um, <coughs> or leave in our district um, if they're, we're not congruent with their instructional mission. They don't care about roofs. They don't care about unless, you know, the boiler goes down and things like that. But they want the best education for their that's children. Number one. That's number one. An old bus that's well maintained is doable. Um, but a bus fleet that's unsustainable creates issues there, too. I know some of our peer districts don't bus at all, um, and so that's not an option for us right now. You know, we have a significant bus number of buses on the road. We bus a significant number of special needs students. Um, you know, so going.
going without in the, in, the, in the realm of buses is not something we're looking at. Um, and so we do need to con continue to support uh, our, our efforts in transportation. But you're right. Um, no, one, no one makes a decision to come to this district or no one leaves because their child is riding in a 2016 bus versus a, a 2009. Um, you know, the age of the bus is irrelevant. It's the curricular mission, it's the pedagogy, it's the capacity of the teachers, and the warmth and the care of the staff. That's why they're here. That's why they stay. Anything else, Penny? I think we still have some more pages to go to. Uh, if we go to the next page, it then talks about and breaks down what page are you on? Um, at the top it says maintenance expenditures now. <coughs> This is an interesting one because the teams here do a heck of a good job with what they got. The way I read this, agree. Mm -hmm. We're spending more because our buildings are and buses are in the shape that they're in. We're you know have more maintenance needs on the buses and you know things like that so that they'll catch inspection and be safe. Right. So once we start replacing the buses and getting things taken care of in the building, the costs will go down. Yeah. And that's where you'll okay. see sometimes a, a positively disproportionate numbers game. If you invest 80000 in a new bus, right. over the life of that bus, you, you're going to see more than that cost hopefully reduce in operations and maintenance and transportation. If you're constantly doing body work and rebuilding hinges and working on the engine and transmission, um, you're investing significant time in that bus, and you hope Especially when you purchase the bus, it's under warranty mm -hmm. for a period of time, so you really have almost no, other than oil changes and tires, you have almost no investment on the upkeep side. So, um, you know, once we can make that investment, I think it, the, the dividends then pay off, not just that year, but they do pay off over time, certainly uh, immediately while the bus is under warranty, and then still for a little bit thereafter until it becomes, you know, more of a, a maintenance burden. Can you? Um did you have anything <coughs> to tell us about this sheet? No. The communications cost? What does that include? <coughs> because we're at 570246 and that's part of maintenance, this communication. Provided by public utilities such as water, sewage, and garbage oh. collection, cost for telephone, telegraph. We don't have that. We don't have that. It's not on the bottom? We don't have that. We have the part that you have there, but we don't have that. Oh, I'm reading off my, my old original that I gave out before the holiday. Let me, let me show you this. I don't know why I didn't copy over. So it says cost for telephone and telegraph are not included here but are included in the communications uh, section. So I'm assuming that's this, any is that district telephone? I'd have to pull the number telegraph. to make sure that it matches, but that would be my assumption right now. I didn't pull the, the uh, function code for telephones, but I can do that to make sure. Because I know we do have a substantial telephone bill from last year, or from the past couple of years, because of the DS1, DSL lines and all of those things that with the transition that we needed to get rid of and issues that we had to take care of. I know one of the things I heard about shortly after my arrival uh, were a significant number of open lines that, in effect, were still on the district's books, um, but that weren't in use. So we've, we've of course, tried.
trim those down so this this older 14, 15 number reflects that. And I, honestly, I don't know if that was from closed building or, or programs that were but shut I'll, down. I'll the, I'm, I'm not sure why that's not maintenance, though. You're just Telephone and telegraph have nothing to do with maintenance. it falls under in the, under the Michigan County Manual. May, um, telephone, utilities, and all of that falls under maintenance because it's part of the building. So it falls under the function code 261, and so that's why it falls under maintenance. I, I assume it's a throwback to when it was strictly POTS instead of the ORI. A lot of it was POTS, mm -hmm. so, yeah. But I will pull the account numbers to find out exactly what they came up with and, and what was included in that 570000 So I, I'm just saying, how can we be 570246 and um, Romulus is 119. Wayne Westland is 810. 810,000. I mean, what, what is included in that? And, and I'll pull it in, like, you know, because I don't know. Are Plato licenses, is that under here? I don't believe so. Because that should be under um, instructional technology. That's just a lot of money. A lot of money for that area. I just need to know exactly what that is. Of course. Or we do we do some stuff. And then the custodial FTE, skilled trace maintenance FTE, that was not available for anybody else? According to them, no. Problematic, I would think, to run that analysis. I mean, I learned from Thor and Leanne, like last year, that the way we do work, our employees seem to be a lot more flexible than some other districts uh, in the way they're aligned. So I'm, I, I don't know what, but the way Thor kind of explained it to me is that doing an apples to apples comparison for our district to others would be difficult. Is that fair? Yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah. 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 Yeah.